you guys were tackling some really deep and heavy issues. Were there any times where you felt like you had to take a breather or if a scene ended, you needed to just do something to wind down? <laughs> or did you stay in character? Every day we needed to wind day. down. Every day we to wind down, yeah. I think a lot of the scenes between Kelvin and I, I needed, I was like Googling like spa. <laughs> <laughs> Nearest spa. Like Taylor. Yeah. Come with me to the spa. We would make little lattes. I'd make Alexa these like night elixirs. I'd like to make, make these little mushroom potions for her. They and were so comforting. Walk across the hallway and, so, and give yeah, them to her. Yeah, <laughs> they were really like, comforting. I needed that. Yeah. A lot of love. You were good or stayed in character? I wasn't good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just went back and my buddy was the, he's in, the guy that plays one of my friends in the movie. We lived yeah. together. So we were just like in the hotel room chilling. Yeah. Just chilling, playing. <laughs> Fake basketball. Mm. <laughs> well, little little hoop on yeah. The yeah, a little hoop on the wall, you know. <laughs> In several interviews, you guys said how collaborative this production was um, and how Trey really trusted you to form your character. But were there times that you kind of wanted more direction or were you happy to have this freedom? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we never get happy. this freedom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we were all happy to have this freedom. Trey is so trusting and we trusted him. And mm -hmm. so. It just felt like energetically aligned. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a thing where like you don't have to say much to feel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. that's like the best directing. It's like an energy exchange. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think we all were just feeling that and in this like zone together. Yeah. It felt good. I think like the really good directing, he's not he's not like so hands off that he's like, I don't care what happens, like right. be crazy with the character and run <laughs> off the script. He's yeah. like he's it's a controlled freedom. Mm -hmm. right. It's in a it's in a, a vacuum where you can run around, but there still is a parameter. Right. So it's a very spe like a specifically safe, free environment that you that you just don't get, and that's why it's so special to be free in that way. Yeah. 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 Because um, trust, I mean, like like you said, trust is a huge big thing, and he trusted yeah. us, and I think no one was going to walk in there and try to butcher the movie. <laughs> no. Everyone had a lot of respect for the yeah. material, so yeah. it just adds to, like, a, a, a safe space. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys shot a lot, and then a lot was cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were there any scenes that were cut that you were hoping to see? So much of me. So many. Stuff. Yeah. So many. Oh, my God. We so had this many. epic stuff that happened in the beginning. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I don't know what was cut from I know what was cut from our half and yeah I, I hope one day it's released. She's so good in it. <laughs> yeah. She's like she's so good in this. Thank you. I know you guys are uh, have emerging careers um, and bright futures so are there any type of roles that you're trying to pursue? Mm -hmm. A comedy. Yeah. Bring Please, a comedy give her a to guess. me. Bring me a comedy. She deserves yeah. a comedy. She needs a comedy. Um, I think Anything that's good. Yeah. 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 Sci-fi. Taylor's like, I'm. A, <laughs> Something like, with I a sword. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love a, like a samurai sword. I've I've played with one recently for a shoot, and I've really connected to the sword. So Ooh. maybe something with a samurai sword. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I think people can relate to this film in some type of aspect. It feels very personal. Yeah. So um, was any part of the script based off of your real life experience? Definitely. Uh, a lot. I think the whole narrative kind of functions uh, like autobiography or semi-autobiographical semi to a fictional narrative and back to autobiography and it keeps going like that in a kind of pattern through the whole thing. It's definitely a really profound and impactful film. Well, thank you. Um, and it addresses really heavy topics. Uh, we've got abortion, drug abuse, grief. Was there a specific reason why you chose characters that are teenagers to deal with these issues? That's a good question, honestly. It happened really organically over a, a kind of a long amount of time. Um, it, I think a big part of that is also when you're that age, you know, you're not an adult, you're not a kid, and you feel everything. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I felt it can feel like the weight of the world and so emotional and you experience a lot. So I think that combined with other things, it just naturally became that. I also think you did an incredible job with creating a healthy, authentic black family. Um, so was this always the idea that it was going to be following this black family's journey? It's because of Kelvin. Um, I had... Uh, you know, this had been brewing for a very long time, but I couldn't click it all into place. You yeah. know, it was like a family, and it was a brother and sister, and this tragedy, and 
and all this good stuff. But I could every time I tried to write something, it didn't all come together. And I met Kel on my last movie, and we loved each other and wanted to work together again. And uh, I think I think it was that. And um, you know, I went through some things in my life to where it all clicked into place. And then um, for the nuance and specificity of a black family like it's it's all because of Cal you know so when when I actually started writing it together or writing it for the first time we were almost doing like mini therapy sessions <laughs> and uh, there were phone calls and texts because he was off working on other movies and I was just in Florida um, and it was talking about a lot of um, our, our past at, when we were that age you know relationships with our fathers with our mothers with uh, uh, any lovers and um pressures we felt, uh, commonalities, differences, all that good stuff. So uh, that was really incredible. And we, we were kind of doing that and I was writing, then I sent him a draft. And then he was one of the first people to get a draft. He got it probably eight months before we started shooting and the collaboration continued to build through everything. Um, and then it just continued with, all, with our incredible cast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. So this film had a kind of like a fly on the wall type of feel. I felt like a, a silent observer and it kind of reminded me of the 90s film Kids and just how sure. raw yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to know, where did you pull inspiration from other movies or directors? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think another big part of it is, you know, I'm obsessed with movies and love them and this elements of this had been brewing for so long that I think a lot of that just naturally embeds its way in there. It's funny you mentioned kids too, because Harmony Kareen has a, a voice cameo in this movie. Oh, yes. He's uh, when when Tay or Emily's in class, you can hear his voice. Uh, he lives down in South Florida and just came to shoot with us for a day. Oh, that's um, but yeah, a lot of a lot, I, to be honest, when I actually started writing, it was a lot of uh, it was music more so in Florida and just drawing on some some real life stuff. Um, and and the collaboration, and everything. So it was less movies, but I mean, I love movies. They're all it's all embedded in there.